Now some of you are from Phoenix, and I should probably check them out. <laughs> This is an astrograph. Um, essentially, it's a space camera. Now, uh, you'll remember me talking about uh, the legal battle that we got into um, over the observatory right after Percival Lowell's death. Um, basically, uh, there was about 10 years where we weren't doing any kind of research, and it was a real shame. Um, this was right around the time when people all over the world were looking for Pluto, which was uh, one of Percival Lowell's original goals um, right before his death. So, when the observatory got back under control and we got everything, uh, we wanted something to bring Percival Lowell's name back up to its original steps. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money to, get to make this happen, though. So, uh, Percival Lowell's brother, uh, Lawrence, actually donated this telescope to the observatory. Uh, it cost about $10,000 in those days, a uh, modest sum. He was the president of Harvard, Harvard so I think he could spring it. Um, and they were looking for an astronomer who was willing to look for Pluto for a very small amount of money. Um, enter Clyde Tombaugh. Clyde Tombaugh was a pig farmer from Kansas who had a high school diploma, and that was it. Um, he built his own telescopes. He was a very amateur astronomer. And um, he basically had built telescopes out of leftover farm equipment around his farm, and had done, done observations of Jupiter and of Saturn, and had just made drawings. And they were very, very detailed drawings. Um, so when the observatory called out for an astronomer to try and find Pluto, he sent in application after application after application. Kept getting turned down. They were telling him things like, we want a college graduate, you know, we want a professional astronomer. However, he was the only one willing to work for the amount of money they offered. <laughs> and so finally they said, okay, you know what, your drawings are good. Uh, we think you can probably do this. So we'll go ahead and have you come join the observatory. Uh, we'll pay you the exorbitant salary of room and board um, as long as you for six days out of the week, uh, fix our toilets, chop wood for our fires, do maintenance work around. You know, he was a very just kind of general handyman. Uh, but on that seventh night, he got to come up here and play with this telescope, or this camera. Um, so what he would do is he would come up here in the pitch black of night, and he would insert a 17 by 14 inch glass plate that had two sides of emulsion chemicals on it. Uh, one to draw the light into the glass, and the other one to make it stay there. Now, um, in the dark of night, there is a definite up and down uh, that you have to put this glass plate in, and he couldn't see anything. Basically, any kind of light that he would hit that plate would get absorbed into it and would mess up the calculations and observations he was able to do. So, what he had to do, and I'm not going to do this because I know my coworkers, um, he would lick the top of the plate, he would lick the bottom of the plate, and then whichever side his tongue stuck to would be the side that went up. So he would put it in, and then he would quickly wipe off his tongue because it was coated in mercury. Um, luckily, he was able to get it all off in time, no mercury poisoning for him, and he was able to find Pluto. Um, we saw the blink comparator in the museum, if not, uh, that will be open later tonight. Uh, you guys can take a closer look at that. And so what he would have to do is have to take a picture for an hour at a time to get the kind of light to see what Pluto would have been like. Now, in that day, uh, they, they finally did have the motor to drive it um, at the right speed to account for the Earth's rotation. However, um, in the same way as the Clark Dome, uh, this telescope, whenever you turned a light on on a different side of campus, it would change the amount of current going to this motor. So it would go faster and slower, and it's essentially like taking a picture like this in the dark. Uh, you're not going to get anything that you're going to be able to use. So Clyde Tombaugh, being the patient, patient man he was, would sit here, look through this spotting scope, get a different star in the bullseye that was right next to where Pluto should have been, and he would move this telescope for an hour at a time, millimeter by millimeter. Oh, wow. Now, he would do this about four times a night. So imagine four hours out here in the cold December, um, making sure you didn't have to sneeze, making sure your foot didn't itch, because as soon as you stop pushing at that constant speed, it's, it's, it's ruined. Uh, you just have to throw the glass plate away and shatter it, because I mean, you're not going to be able to do anything with that. Um, <clears throat> so he would spend you know, four or five hours a night doing that. And then the rest of his week, in between his other jobs, he would spend you know, countless hours staring at these two pictures that were about a week apart trying to find a little dot moving. Um, take a look at the blink comparator if you haven't already uh, later today, because it's incredibly hard to spot. Um, he was able to find Pluto in the space of about 10 months. Um, astronomers had been working this entire 10 years that Lowell Observatory hadn't been doing it, and uh, it was only thanks to uh, Lowell's calculations and math that was able to point them in the right direction. 
Now, when I talked about the Clark telescope being the, the size of the sky that your pinky extended arm's length, uh, this telescope only sees an area of the sky that if you take a dime and you hold that dime at arm's length, and then you look at the eye of the president on the dime, uh, that's the area of the sky that you're taking a picture of. So, I mean, they had to know exactly where they were looking. And I, I can't even begin to imagine how, how you would do that, you know? Um, they would line up here on the declination and write ascension knobs again, uh, whereabouts they were looking, and it all worked out. He was able to find it. Um, uh, they actually released the date of the planet um, on Percival Lowe's birthday, on March 30th. Uh, of the year that he found it, and this was only after he was able to do some Pew review. Uh, since he wasn't a licensed astronomer, he had to go around to all of his astronomer buddies say, hey, I think I found a planet, check it out. Hey, I think I found a planet, check it out, sign up. And they did that. Um, people all around the world were very angry that this high school graduate had gotten to find this planet, and they had been working for years and years and years to find it. Um, but, you know, it was really due to his patience and his drive and his passion that uh, he was able to do this job. Um, it's a really lucky thing the observatory kind of let him work here because otherwise he would have gone off somewhere else and we wouldn't be as famous. <laughs> um, this telescope was used for a number of years afterwards, uh, up until the early 90s even, uh, with the same mechanism uh, to find Kuiper Belt objects, um, meteors, comets, things like that. Um, we moved it down to Anderson Mesa for a while and then brought it back up here just for um, kind of historical references. Uh, but we do not use this telescope anymore. We don't open it up at night for the public. Uh, basically because there's nowhere to look for here. I mean, it'd be really boring. Um, <clears throat> we also don't move the dome. Uh, the, this dome wasn't constructed as well as the Clark Dome. You'll notice a lot of water damage around here on the top. Uh, keep in mind the observatory didn't have Percival Lowell's extensive funds at this point. So uh, we were kind of making do with what we could get. Um, after Clyde Tombaugh found Pluto, uh, there's really nowhere to go from there. I mean, he just found the ninth planet of the solar system. Um, luckily, he didn't get to hear about it being reclassified. I don't know what he would have had to say about that. But uh, he still spent years with this telescope, um, watching objects, trying to find he, or these objects that were far away, and um, became really good at using this telescope. I still looking for fate. Yeah. Well, I think. I'm